The first evidence of plants on land is from the Ordovician, but fossils of land plants become steadily more common through the Silurian. By the end of the Silurian, the diversification of plants on land and the creation of new kinds of land ecosystems was well underway. There is clear evidence for a massive explosion of animal lia in the sea around the beginning of the Cambrian, but the first evidence of well-developed ecosystems on land, with complex animals and plants, came much later, in the Silurian. The earliest indication that plants were beginning to colonize the land is provided by microscopic spores isolated from Ordovician rocks. These spores have a tough and resistant wall, which would have helped the living cell survive desiccation and dispersal through the air. The resistant wall also enhances the preservation of spores in the fossil record. From the Ordovician and Silurian onward, spores as well as pollen grains, which are their equivalent in seed plants, are a very important part of the plant record. Spores of early land plants become more common during the Silurian and are joined eventually by plant fossils assigned to the genus Cooksonia. Although these fossils are usually tiny, their branching axes and terminal sporangia are visible to the naked eye. Some Cooksonia fossils show the first evidence of specialized, water-conducting cells in the center of their axes. These cells have special internal thickenings of the cell wall that prevented them from collapsing as water was carried through them to the aerial parts of the plants. Several lines of evidence suggest that the land surface was colonized from freshwater rather than directly from the oceans. The earliest land plants may have been a special kind of green alga that was adapted to living in temporary freshwater pools. The resistant walled spores may have been an early adaptation that allowed these plants to disperse from pool to pool. Fossil plants from the Silurian are relatively rare, and usually rather small and poorly understood, but there is no doubt that the Silurian was a critical time in the early diversification of land plants. Some of the pioneering land plants of the Silurian may have been closely related to living mosses and hornworts, but few of the early fossils from this time are known well enough to assess this in detail. Fossils of early plants are sometimes difficult to distinguish from other objects, such as mineral growths or animal remains. Silophyte and Hede is a classic exemplary of the confusion this can create. When it was found, it was identified as the world's earliest plant, but it is now thought to be a colony of animals related to graptolites. This is only one of several fossils classified as Silophyton. Growing not much taller than a pin, Cooksonia is one of the world's earliest known land plants. It had slender, leafless branches with Y-shaped forks, topped by capsules that released microscopic spores. Some fossils have a dar. K stripe in their stems. This may be the remains of vascular tissue, the internal plumbing that most living plants have for moving water. Cooksonia grew on estuarine mud and other damp, low-lying habitats, forming dense mats. Algae make up a large, heterogeneous group of organisms that include the closest relatives of green plants. They evolved in water, where most still live today. The earliest forms were microscopic and single-celled, and ancestral to larger algae, including seaweeds. Red algae often form hard deposits of calcium carbonate that fossilize well, as do some green algae. Brown algae leave fewer fossils because they are uncalcified and less robust. For the Silurian, Baraguanathia was an unusually large and complex plant, with upright branches that grew from ground-hugging stems. Its surface was covered with simple, spirally arranged leaves, a feature that has persisted in lycophytes through the present day. Like all early and land plants, Baraguanathia reproduced by growing spores. These formed in capsules tucked into its axles, the points where the leaves meet the stems. The development of land plants initiated during the Ordovician and Silurian continued rapidly during the Devonian, with an explosion of diversity and the appearance of many new and different kinds of plants. By the end of the Devonian, the forerunners of many groups of living plants had already evolved. Land plants evolved from ancestors that lived in freshwater and key adaptations that help control water loss are present in various forms in early land plants. Early animals faced the same difficulty as they followed plants into the new kinds of ecosystems that were forming on land. Several different groups of animals moved onto land independently, but the colonization of land appears to have occurred only once in the evolutionary history of plants. 
the most important fossil occurrence of understanding the structure of early land plants, as well as for studying many aspects of early land ecosystems, was discovered in 1914 near the village of Rhiney in Scotland. The Rhiney Chert is an ancient peat bog that is preserved in silica. Nearby volcanic activity appears to have been the cause of the remarkable preservation. In the Rhiney Chert, Early land plants, along with hungi, algae and a few early land arthropods, are preserved in their position of growth, exactly where they once lived almost 400 million years ago. The fossil plants in the Rhiney chert are exquisitely preserved. They include several different kinds of rhineophytes, such as algophyton and rhinia. Rhineophytes have simple branching axes, similar to those of Cooksonia, but with more variation in the form of the branching. Spores are produced in elongated sporangia at the branch tips. Axes of asteroxylon are covered with small, flattened, flap-like leaves, occasionally with small, kidney-shaped sporangia scattered among them. None of these early land plants are very large, but all have elonga. Ted cells in the center of their axes that helped conduct water from the lower parts of the plants, which were rooted in the soil, to the upper parts of the plant growing in the air. During the Middle and Late Devonian, Rhineophytes were eventually displaced by larger plants with more complex branching, such as xylophyton. Larger plants may have been more successful as the struggle for light intensified in early land ecosystems. Xylophyton and similar plants also show a new kind of growth form, with a single main axis and smaller lateral branches. These lateral branches subsequently became modified to form the different kinds of leaves seen in living ferns, horsetails, and seed plants. As the size of land plants continued to increase during the Devonian, more conducting cells were needed to keep the upper parts of the plants supplied with water. Increasingly, these cells also provided the internal support needed to keep the plants upright. In the Middle and Late Devonian, a new innovation was the ability to produce large quantities of water conducting cells throughout the life of the plant. This gave some plants the capacity to produce significant amounts of woody tissue. The earliest true trees with woody trunks appear for the first time in the late Devonian. Prototaxites is one of the world's most enigmatic macrofossils. It was first described in the late 1850s by Canadian geologist John William Dawson, who thought it was fossilized rotting wood. He named it Prototaxites, first you. Prototaxites fossils are sometimes found intact, or broken into short, cylindrical sections that typically have concentric markings resembling tree rings. However, under a microscope, their structure is clearly unlike wood, instead of plant cells with clearly defined walls, they have microscopic tubes that run vertically inside the trunk. Individually, these tubes are thinner than a human hair, but they form a dense mass that can be over one meter across. Dawson interpreted these as fungal threads feeding on dead wood. However, later researchers dismissed his suggestion that prototaxites was a tree, or even a plant. At various times, it has been interpreted as a kelp-like alga, a lichen and most recently, as the giant fruiting body of a fungus. With a rounded outline and net-like surface, parka is an intriguing fossil. In the past, it was mistaken for many objects, including the eggs of prehistoric arthropods or fish. However, its microscopic structure reveals that it was an alga, with a hard outer coat covering a flat body only a few dozen cells thick. The fossil's surface disks are tiny compartments, each filled with thousands of spores. Anatomical and chemical features link parka to a group of algae called the coleochetes. These are probably the closest living relatives of green plants. Rhinia is one of the best known early plants, with horizontal and upright branches but no true roots or leaves. The horizontal branches called rhizomes, spread out as they colonized the ground and its upright branches divided repeatedly, creating a low-growing tangle that intercepted a maximum amount of light. It was one of the first vascular plants, with specialized tissues for carrying water and dissolved substances. It also had a waterproof outer covering and stomata, microscopic pores that could be opened or closed to regulate water loss and gas exchange. The tiny nodules scattered over its stems are less easily explained. These have been identified as signs of damage, dormant branches, and secretory structures. One of the earliest terrestrial plant, algophyton flourished near hot springs 396 million years ago. 
Anchored by microscopic hairs, its creeping rhizomes produced upright branches that repeatedly divided into two. Algophyton had a waterproof outer covering to prevent dehydration, and microscopic pores that could be closed by their special guard cells. Spore-producing, egg-shaped capsules grew on its tips. With its slender branches, Horneophyton resembled several other early plants found as Scotland's rhiny chest. However, its fossils show two unique features, swollen stem bases and lobe spore-producing organs. Each of the lobes was cylindrical with a central internal column. This structure is found in living mosses, but the spore-bearing part of the Horneophyton life cycle is free-living, an evolutionary breakthrough absent in mosses. This set of features has made it difficult to class C. However, there is no doubt that it was successful in the early Devonian, when it grew in miniature thickets on damp ground. Many early land plants had dichotomous growth, meaning that their stems divided into equal halves. However, Rinalia exhibited a different kind of growth, with unequal branching creating more complex shapes. Each of its stems had a leading growing point, with small branches splitting off on either side. These sides branches splitting off on either side. These side branches bore the plant spore forming organs. Fossils of Rinalia come from the Gaspé Peninsula in Quebec, where they were first found in the 1970s. Exactly where it fits in plant evolution is uncertain, although its spore capsules may be a link with simple plants called zosterophylls. Preserved in fine-grained rock, fossils of zosterophyllum have been found in many parts of the world. They first appeared in the Silurian, and by the Devonian many different species had evolved. Known collectively as zosterophylls, they covered large areas of damp, low-lying ground. Fossil zosterophylls were first thought to be related to zostera, or eel grass, which is one of the few flowering plants that grows in the sea. However, we now know they are not closely related. Zosterophylls may have been ancestors of lycopods, the plant group that included the giant club mosses. Pressed flat by ancient silt, fossils of Discalus show a plant that flourished nearly 400 million years ago. This zosterophyll was discovered in China in the late 1980s. Like other zosterophylls, Discalus did not have true roots or leaves and was made up of heavily branched stems. It grew by uncurling across the ground. The stems often formed H-shaped or K-shaped branches, as well as simply dividing in two. The branches may have helped bind the plant into a sturdy tuft. Discalus had spore capsules arranged in open spirals along the sides of its stems. Each sporangium was the size of a pea. During the 19th century, Sodonia was the subject of a case of mistaken identity, when two very different fossil PLA NTS were combined. Today, it is recognized as a typical zosterophyll, with creeping, root-like rhizomes and upright stems. These grew by uncoiling, and formed paired branches. Sodonia's water-conducting system may have given it support, a double role that is a key feature of modern vascular plants. Sodonia's kidney-shaped spore capsules split into two halves to release their spores. The spore-producing form, or sporophyte was just one phase in the life cycle of a primitive plant. The sporophyte dispersed spores, which grew into gametophytes, a second phase concerned with sexual reproduction. Gametophytes are seldom preserved as fossils, but shotophyton is one rare example. It had stalks ending in cups where the male and female sex cells were produced. After rain, Mature male cells swam through the water to fertilize the female ones, and sprout into new sporophytes. Gametophytes and sporophytes generally look very different. Several different types of primitive land plants seem to have produced shotophyto-like gametophytes, possibly including some zosterophylls. This low-growing plant does not fit neatly into any group of Devonian plants. Some botanists classify it as a zosterophyll, but others think it belongs to a sister group of its belongs to a sister group of its own. Its stems resemble those of zosterophylls, they lack true roots or leaves, but protobaronophyton spore-producing capsules are arranged in clusters not seen in other zosterophylls. Seen under a strong microscope, protobaronophyton has another peculiarity, it was heterosporous, meaning that it produced two different sizes of spores. Heterosporous plants normally use separate sporangia to make different spores. Protobaronophyton is unusual in that its single spore capsules made both sizes. Formerly known as protolepidodendron, this lycopod is one of many early plants discovered in China. 
As its original name indicates, this plant was the forerunner of greater things to come. With its relatives, Monarodendron belonged to the line that eventually produced Lepidodendron and other giant club mosses of Carboniferous times. Monarodendron's ground-hugging stems occasionally grew upwards toward the light. These stems carried the spore capsules cradled in the uppermost leaves. When the spores were ripe, the capsules split open, shedding them into the wind. With its covering of small, scale-like leaves, Asteroxylon macchiae is the most complex plant that has been found in the Rhiney chert. Another Asteroxylon species has also since been found across northern Europe. Its name, meaning star wood, is a reference to the shape of its water-carrying vascular system, which was star-like in cross-section. The root-like rhizomes under the ground were thinner than the stems above it, an arrangement that echoes the proportions of living plants. Asteroxylon's stems were covered in leaf-like scales. Like leaves, their purpose was to collect light, but the scales were constructed differ. Ently from true leaves. Instead, they were probably an early form of mycophil, the leaf-like flaps that are a feature of modern lycophytes. First identified in 1859, Silophyton was one of the earliest of the Euphilophytes, a group that includes the great majority of living plants. Many different species have been found across the world. Some were smooth-stemmed, others were covered in spines. However, one species, Silophyton hedae, described from Silurian rocks, turned out to be a colony of marine invertebrates, rather than a plant. First described in 1856, Cladoxylon belonged to one of the earliest groups of plants to develop into trees. Cladoxylon itself was probably a low-growing plant, with stems less than 10 cm thick, but some of its relatives had stout trunks and grew much higher. Cladoxylon's miniature trunk was reinforced by thick strands of water-conducting tissue, which repeatedly divided and rejoined as they traveled the length of the stern. This arrangement gave the plant extra strength. The Devonian plant was once thought to be a primitive horsetail but is now believed to be related to the ancestors of today's ferns. Fossils of Hyenia show a plant with a short upright stem not unlike those of other Devonian plants. However, some of its ground-hugging, root-like rhizomes were 5 cm thick, huge compared to those of other primitive plants. One rhizome, found in the 1970s, was almost 2 meters long, showing that Hyenia could colonize large areas of ground. Hyenia also spread by shedding spores. Its spore capsules were at the branch tips. The spores escaped through a lengthways split in the capsule when they were ripe. Trees have evolved independently in many groups of plants, and Colomophyton and its relatives were among the earliest. Trees were tall for two reasons, it gave them an edge in the competition for light, and it also helped them scatter their spores over a wide area. However, it took more time and energy for them to grow. Colomophyton's relatives include Wadiza, often described as the world's first tree, which reached a height of 12 meters. A grove of Wadiza stumps was unearthed in New York State in 1870. With its trunk and spreading branches, Archaeopteris is the first tree to have formed forests on a truly global scale. It is also one of the first plants known to have had dense wood and true leaves. Study of Archaeopteris began in the second half of the 19th century, when its fossilized leaves were thought to belong to a low-growing fern. They were named Archaeopteris, or Ancient Wing, because of their feathery appearance, a name similar to the fossil bird Archaeopteryx. Nearly a hundred years passed before it was linked with fossilized trunks that showed it to be a tree. Archaeopteris had a similar outline and type of wood to many modern conifers. However, it belonged to an earlier ground known as the progymnosperms. This bushy plant was related to Archaeopteris, but it represent s an earlier stage in progymnosperm evolution, before the development of true leaves. One sign of this is that its stems branched in many different plants, this feature helped leafless plants like Anurophyton trap more light. Unlike many other progymnosperms, Anurophyton had only a small amount of wood, which suggests that it was a low-growing or straggling plant rather than a substantial tree. Elongated, complex organs that were born in clusters produce spores. Divided into two groups, these organs, which were attached to shared stalks, looked like stubby fingers in a pair of hands. Fossils of Relimia are widespread in sedimentary rocks dating to the Middle Devonian. During the 19th century, it was thought to be a seaweed, before being reclassified as a fern. 
Today, it is recognized as an early progymnosperm, making it one of the earliest plants with woody stems. Relimia was a shrub or small tree, and had twig-like branches up to 2.5 cm across. Like aneurophyton, it did not have true leaves. Most fossils show the branches only, but a few include the spore-producing structures that grew when the plant was mature. Each cluster of spore capsules was about the size of a golf ball, with tightly rolled branches like the stems of a fern. Elkinsia marks a great turning point in evolution because it is one of the earliest plants known to have produced seeds. It had straggling stems with two different kinds of fronds, some spread out to catch the light, while others divided into fine branches, which ended in structures seeds arranged in groups of four, each of these seeds were about 7 mm long. Unlike simple spores, seeds are complex packages of living cells, containing food reserves and an embryo plant. Meaning dwarf tree, chamadendron belonged to a group of lycophytes that had forked leaflets arranged spirally around their stems. Initially, they were low-growing, but their descendants included the great trees that dominated Carboniferous swamps. As THSE plants grew taller, they evolved features to give them support, including a woody stem.